Hi everyone, I'm Scott Davenport and welcome to On One Inspiration. A big thanks to On One for inviting me back. I'm a landscape photographer and photo educator based in San Diego, California. I'm known mainly for my seascape photography, and if you've seen my work before, you know that I can't get enough of the ocean. However, today's photo is not a seascape. It's a shot I took in Sintra, Portugal a couple of years ago. I want to share this with you because it shows that post-processing is not a straight path. In fact, most of my post-processing sessions are very crooked. We have an idea of what we want the photo to look like, and there's a lot of twists and turns and switchbacks along the way to get to our final image. And I think that's true for a lot of photographers. We don't know exactly what filters to apply. We're not quite sure of where our sliders should be set. And we need to use the visual feedback we're getting as we work our image to figure out and fine tune things to get to that final photo. So with that, let's get into On One Photo Raw and start working on this photo. And I'll share the thought process behind each step and show you why I went in certain directions along the way. So here's the shot straight out of the camera. And what prompted me to take the photo was this corridor, this nice glowing light with the yellow in the background and the red door. It makes me want to walk down there and see what's around the corner. But uh, it needs some work. So I'm going to start with a crop because there's a lot of dead space in this shot. And since this is destined for the screen, uh, I'm going to just use a freeform crop, not worrying about a print ratio. So I'm going to bring this down quite a bit so that we're really kind of using this door as my focal point here. I don't need this splash of yellow on the side there. And this column now becomes a little bit too wide and maybe tighten up just a little bit on the bottom. I don't mind the, the entryway there. It gives a bit of an anchor point to say, all right, if I were standing here, I'm going to walk down this corridor. So that looks good. And then I just need to fix the uh, angle here. So clicking outside of the box, I'm going to rotate just a little bit, and I'm using the archway as kind of my vertical. And I have to play a little bit to balance between the vertical here and the vertical here. And these are some older structures, so not everything is always perfectly straight. And I want to make sure that it's something that looks pleasing to the eye, where this looks mostly straight, this looks mostly straight. We're going to call it good and hit apply there. Now let's get some basic adjustments going. Go to tone and color and just hit the auto button to start with. That's already a good improvement. This is, this is getting toward that vision of the corridor is darker, the background is, is brighter, and it's inviting me to walk down there. Uh, the shadows came up a little bit. I'm actually going to bring those back down. I'm going to hold the J key down while I pull this slider back. And that will show me when I start to clip in the black areas. And it's going to be probably in those little seams there. There we go. Let's pull that back some. Somewhere around there. On the highlights, I need to pull those back as well to recover some of that highlight. Um, ending up around nine or so looks pretty good. It's then the number is not important. It's the, the feel of the photo. Um, and the shadows do feel a little bit too dark. So I'm already in that mode of, all right, I tried one adjustment. I'm not sure about that. Let me open those back up a little bit because I know I'm going to add some contrast later. That tends to darken photos. White point looks okay. I don't want to push that. Exposure is fine. Let's add contrast here. I'm going to back the contrast off some. And the reasoning behind that is I will be adding dynamic contrast. And so I don't want a double dose of a contrast adjustment and overdo things. And I do want to add some details in the, the textures of this scene. There's a lot of nice, you know, marble and stone. A little bit here. And just 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 a bit. Actually, you know, now that we've been we've been working on contrast and details and so forth, let's get right in there and start working on the details. So dynamic contrast in the effects module. And natural looks good. I am going to increase the smalls a little bit. Again, emphasizing those little small details that are in the other various you know, bricks and stones here. And I will tug the highlights back some just a little bit more. Now I'm going to pull it really far so you can see the area is affecting this, you know, this patch of bright sunlight. This was, you know, really midday. Um, and it's okay to me that that's bright there. I just don't want to have a total loss of detail. Now at this point, I'm thinking about the door. The door is my subject, and I want that to pop out. So I want to increase the reds of that door. I'm going to go back to develop and add a color adjustment and see what I can do with the reds here. So the red channel is selected. I'm going to start pushing that up and 
Okay, the door's not getting as red as I want it to. And what's happening is this orange here is getting too orange. So we're gonna abandon that. That's not gonna work. We'll go over to effects instead and we'll use the color enhancer. Now we'll do the same thing. We'll try to adjust these reds, but what I can do with the color enhancer that I can't do in develop is use the masking tools. So let's do a saturation choice with this eyedropper. Choose the eyedropper, put it right in this red area here and start dragging it to the right. And right now I'm only watching the door. I don't care about what's going on. The orange is becoming you know, way, way over the top. I just want that red to be really good. And I may also drag this hue down to make that really red. Something, let's get really, really red. I'm gonna have to pull back that saturation. Now that saturation's too, too hot. All right, again, I'm only paying attention to the door. I'm ignoring the terribleness that's happening to that, that back wall right now. All right, so at this point, what I want to do is only apply this to the door itself. So in the masking area, I will invert the mask. Now that's removed all of the color treatment from the entire scene. Grab the masking brush. I'll turn on the perfect brush. Opacity is 100%. And then, uh, oh, I swing to switch to paint in. And then I can paint in just the color on the doorway there, like that. All right, now if I press the O key, you can see I've only masked the door. Let's make sure we color in really well. And now before and after. So we're making that door pop a little bit more. All right, we're getting there. The next thing I want to do is uh, draw the eye more toward the center of the frame. So right now everything's got, uh, it's relatively bright. We'll go to local adjustments and grab the local adjustment bug. And I want to use a shape called edges, which is apply the effect to the edges of the mask. So if I drop the bug there and I've got the exposure, the default is this darkened preset, I'm lowering the exposure. I start to adjust this bug. And let's do it so kind of the curve is roughly around the arch and then I can feather it out so it's like this. And once we've done that, we can fine tune. You can see how um, as I raise and lower the exposure slider, it's affecting the edges of this mask. And that's exactly what I want. I want the areas outside of the center to get a little bit darker. It's really, this, is, this part's acting just like a vignette would. But what I can do with the local adjustment is also do some tweaks and changes to things like detail or shadows and so forth. And so I'm actually going to, to deepen the shadows a little bit. And this is, again, is targeting only this area around the outside of this mask. And I can also lower the details. I'm gonna do that intentionally because our eyes are gonna get drawn to the sharpest part of the image. And I want that to be the center. Something like that looks pretty good. All right. Now, as I look at this, uh, I want more punch in the center of this frame. So I'm going to copy this mask and go back into, oh, well, not into develop, go back into the overall settings and effects and revisit dynamic contrast. And I'm going to paste that mask and now invert that mask. So notice the punch of contrast. Whoops, I hit it again. There we go. The punch of contrast is happening here and I'm lessening the effect of the dynamic contrast on the outside. I'm drawing that eye more down the corridor and I'm gonna pop those smalls up even more now. So you're getting that feel of, you know, why am I revisiting these sliders? Well, certain changes made in one place might mean I want to change things somewhere else. And I can be a little more liberal now with these sliders pushing them up because I'm only honing in on this center part. Okay, now at uh, this stage, this bright patch is starting to bother me some. So it's time to try to deal with that. Go to local adjustments. We'll add a new adjustment and this will just be a brush. And I'm gonna start with just a very lazy brush stroke. So I've got my brush here already. Let's make the size a little bit bigger. 
and this is going to be looking pretty horrible to start with. So something like that, really lazy. I'm covering all of that highlight area. Now I will go into this gear menu. I love the blending options because now I can apply those to just certain ranges. So I can apply this to just the highlights and I can now you know, protect some of those highlights or not, fine tune everything, even lower the range so I'm not affecting everything. I think that's a little bit too dark. Something like that. Let's see, before and after. Okay, it's just taking enough of the edge off of those highlights that I can still see some of that texture and there is some brick pattern and stone pattern in there. Uh, it's just, but it's still, it still needs to be reasonably bright because that is, that is make sense for the scene. This, you know, bright light we're seeing underneath this arch, it's got to be coming from somewhere. It's bouncing off the ground here. It's hitting some of this wall. So if I were to make this completely dark, that wouldn't look too natural. I think one last thing to do here is add a little more of a glow to that background. Uh, something a little inviting to, uh, to just, once again, make me want to walk down that hallway and see what's around the corner. So I'll go back to overall adjustments. We will add a glow filter to the top of our filter stack. And let's choose one of the presets here. The Ortons are usually very nice. This one's really dark. Let's choose Orton Clean. That's really, really strong. So let's cut the the effect in half, something like that. And I'm watching the center part of the scene. Now this is a balancing act because we don't want to have so much glow that we lose the detail that we've added with the contrast, dynamic contrast. Uh, but I do want a little bit of that you know, softer feel there. So that's pretty nice, right around halfway. And you know what? Actually, let's try this instead. Let's keep this at 100%, but instead we'll add a mask. And so we'll grab our masking bug, and this time we'll use something called center. So I'm masking away from the center of my bug. We'll cut that to 50% or so. Drop the bug and position it again, just like we did the last time, where we'll center this around the archway so that the glow is being masked away at only 50% opacity from the arch. And then we're going to keep that heavier glow and fade it out on the surrounding areas. So if I press the O key again, you can see here's the mask, and I might even tighten that in. Oops, I added a second one by mistake. Let's fix that. And so we can tighten that in a little bit. And I'm kind of going by memory as to where that arch is. That was pretty good. Center that on the door right around there, and maybe feather that out just a little bit more. So let's check the glow before and after. So that's really taking care of our vignetting. I don't need to add any vignetting. I might even expand this a little more so I don't lose the fact that there is a, an entryway here. And it's adding a nice amount of just, you know, mystery and invitation down this, this hallway. So here is our final product. This was before we started anything. Things were tilted, it wasn't cropped right. And then here, is after. So Post-processing is not a straight line. Choices will be driven by visual feedback. As you make changes to certain filters, you might go revisit others. And I think that's totally normal. Ultimately, you're shaping the photo to get it to match the vision that you have in your mind's eye. I'm Scott Davenport, and thanks for watching on One Inspiration.